All right, welcome back for today. I'm gonna try and first get this with a spring on it so it can return and then I can lower it and then I'm gonna work on my mechanism for under here. Hopefully I can get those two things done today. Uh, we'll see. It's almost lunchtime already. <clears throat> I uh, started working out and running and it took me a while to make myself do that this morning. Uh, so I'm a little behind schedule here. Uh, so we'll see what we can do. So I got this little spring that was uh, left over from some previous RC thing. I don't know what. This screw fits in the head. It's an M3, a short M3 screw. Uh, so all I'm going to try and do is cut this. Drill a hole so I can nut it in place. And then drill and tap the side of this and the side of that to hold it in place. I could weld it but I want to be able to remove it <clears throat> for access to the mechanism and stuff. So I have no preconceived dimensions for this uh, part. So I'm going to let it do the talking. All right, first I suppose I should figure out where the spring's going to go on it. Right on <clears throat> this joint. Because I think it'll be able to stay there without modifying anything and I want it to be holding it so it's in the up position and I can compress as it pushes so that way it stays there so I want it to be almost as close to this bracket as it could possibly be All right, now that the spring is tightly in place, we can probably get rid of some of this excess material here. Now, I want it to be mounted in such a manner that it's pushing it all the way up right now. With a little bit of force, just because. Let's mark some holes, and then we'll drill it. Approximately those two spots. So now let's drill this. Works, but it doesn't quite hold it all the way up. It could use a little more pressure on it. So let's get a little spacer on that spring. Let's use one of these for shocks. And put the flat side down so it can still grab the spring. Round it side up, that goes to the bracket. Alright, it's all the way up. Alright, so theory would have that it works. <clears throat> Only in practice shall we know for show. Sure. 
All right, so this is the small battery that I will be using. Should be somewhat easy to fit somewhere in there. Sorry, my angle on this was way off. Let me fix this and we'll do it again. We'll run it up anyway. All right, so there you go. You see the foot is engaged and this is off the ground. Now let's set it down, one forward movement. All right, now it's down. Doo -doo -doo. Truck back into trailer. Oh, there's no weight on it. There we go. All right. Truck engaged with trailer. And now let's keep running it up. And the foot comes up off the truck. Spring's still in place, fully retracted. And trailer comes up again. All right, so far so good. Now let's get this down, because now the next thing I need to do Let's figure out a locking mechanism to hold that neck on. So let's run it down until that foot's engaged. And the trailer can come out. So right now if you see it's setting that down. And once we see that little shoe, call it a shoe now, because I'm calling that a, whoop since I'm calling that a foot, once we see that come down, before it actually lifts anything, that's where the truck can come out from under. Boop. And now there's that. So that works well. Now the next thing that I need to do is another mechanism now that'll somehow lock it that way until it goes this far when it wants to release there's a thing that can push and hold it in place and that way you can set it down so far and drive the truck out from underneath so now let's lift it up to the spot where I want that to occur. All right, so obviously I want to be able to set the trailer down, take the weight off the truck, probably right about there, and then that's where I want this lock to release on the bottom. That way at this point, if I wanted to, it's still engaged, I'd be able to theoretically unhook and drive out from underneath and that'll stay engaged with the trailer because right now without any kind of lock what happens is it drops off and it can come right off and then you can't back back underneath it so I want it to where at this point it'll stay but then after this point it'll release so if you go further than this it can drop the neck off the trailer but up until this point that neck is still engaged with the trailer. 
So I need some sort of positive locking mechanism. Okay, so today was pretty much a uh, thinking day, as it turns out. I did get my spring on here. Let me show you how that works now. You can see it awesome from this point of view. Let's see, so if you look at this mechanism here, the way it works is the key to this whole thing. If you look right here, this is now touching that lever. Now that it's touching that, as this comes forward, it makes a little movement. Watch these little arms work and push this guy up. Ready? There we go. And you could run it till you bottom out the the nut like I did right right inside here. It's bottomed out right now. But <clears throat> but look at that little that little tiny movement makes a lot of movement there on that, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. And then that spring makes sure it returns. A spring that's way down inside there. So now, what I've been thinking about is how to possibly make a mechanism that will lock this trailer on here. And honestly, it's, it's a pain in the butt. I think it's going to work. I'm not 100%. So this is my blueprint. As you can see, it's beautiful. So the idea of that is this vertical line, the big one, is the side of this. So my idea is I'll take a small rod like this, about that long, and I'll mount it on the outside of this between my foot and my neck. And uh, then what I'll do is uh, I'll put a little pin on the end of it and I'll weld a thing on here. So when, that, when it gets to that point, that pin touches, it's going to instantly go like that which will then have an arm with a link well sorry I'll have it up higher up here so it's out of the way of this servo an arm with a link and the link goes backward to way back up underneath here and then back up underneath there it's gonna be a pin that comes out and through with like a little key on the end of it you know that's probably not gonna work either This was bugging me too, how it likes to creep. And it didn't with the Spectrum radio I used. But with this radio, it seems to creep. The one I set it up with, it didn't creep though. So, I don't know. I'm looking at getting, uh, trying another Spectrum radio. Uh, gonna get another six channel radio, just like what's in the truck right now. And then bind them on the same channel so maybe I can get the same radio to control different uh, RX's, different receivers. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to work. I think it will. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think why this idea wouldn't work. I may end up just putting a servo in there. I really don't want to because. Uh, Right now, if I can keep it on the one servo, then I can keep it on the one radio. Because as it turns out, I can probably do some adjustments on my fifth wheel thing. But it seems like... Uh, it seems like that pulley is not going to be enough. I did hook that radio up yesterday. And it seems that pulley isn't going to be enough to open the fifth wheel as it is. It's not going to have enough play on it. So, uh, I'm not 100%. on exactly what I'm going to do with that. And I think the easy fix would be it's a six channel radio in the truck, put it on another channel so I can get full range of movement with a switch, and then I don't have to worry about entering the fifth wheel mode with it. So that'd be nice. But if I got to add another servo to this, then my other idea won't work cuz this will be that will be the fifth channel on that radio for the truck. And then this trailer would be the sixth radio, the sixth channel on the six channel receivers. 
So where would I get a seventh then to control that last servo? And that's why I'm not really 100% what I'm going to do yet. Uh, I think this mechanism would work. Uh, however, the latching point might be something that I need to work out. Because with the amount of lift that that foot gets, I don't know that it would be enough to lift a locking pin out of there. Uh, so I may have to do some weird kind of contraption. That's going to be some more thinking tomorrow, I think. And checking on stuff to see how it uh, actually engages. It's not going to be fun making that, but I'm going to try and make it. Because if I make it and it runs off of one servo movement, that would be super easy and simple. You know? And that would, for operation anyway. And uh, not for fabrication, but for operation, it'd be super easy, uh, which would be ideal. And then you wouldn't have to worry about multiple servos and switches, and it'd just be one servo on the receiver with the one little battery. So that'd be nice and simple. That's the ideal way. We'll see. I'll probably do some more thinking about it here tonight, and then hopefully uh, I'll come up with something. Maybe even a little thing where it connects to the link and then pushes a lever, which that lever then pushes another thing that um, that's on the trailer, and then on the trailer it pushes a pin to lock in the bottom plate. I got all kinds of ideas, and it's lots of mechanisms. I'm just trying to figure out the one that would be easiest to do by hand like this, with hand stuff, where it wouldn't have to be so precise that it'd be unlikely I'd be able to do it. And uh, something that would be simple enough that it'd be reliable as well and at the same time something that would actually work you know I think uh, the the concept with the rod that pushes on the side of the neck would be perfect because as soon as it hits that gauge it would be like flipping a switch and then with your uh, arms on your links you could make it so it's pretty much an instantaneous switch so you wouldn't have to worry about needing much movement of the neck once it hits it it, it goes so that way it wouldn't have to like lift up the truck, for instance, before it disengages. <clears throat> the main thing is going to be how do I make it so it doesn't interfere with pulling the whole uh, neck on and off of the trailer and not also not interfere with the range of motion that this servo already has. So lots of things to think about. Keep thinking maybe tomorrow I'll have something. If not, if not, I'll probably just press on and work on the axles or something until until light bulb goes off. Because I don't want to waste uh, another day on this and not get anywhere. So, we'll see. See you next time.